License and registration, now. The harsh voice cut through the peaceful evening as Captain Ronald Lewis sat quietly in his car. His heart raced, but not from guilt. He knew he'd done nothing wrong. As the headlights from the patrol car glared into his rearview mirror, Ronald took a deep breath and prepared himself for what was coming next. This wasn't just another traffic stop. Something felt very wrong. What would you do if you were in his shoes? It's hard to believe, but within moments, Ronald, a decorated Navy captain who had served his country for over 20 years, would find himself in the center of a racial profiling nightmare. Ronald couldn't believe it. He hadn't been speeding, his car was in perfect condition, and he had no criminal record. So why had he been pulled over? As he gathered his documents, he thought about his family, his wife, Francis, and his kids waiting for him at home. His hands trembled slightly. Despite his years of service, something about this stop was different. Was this about his race? Before he could process further, Officer Daniels, a burly man with a scowl that seemed permanently etched into his face, stomped toward Ronald's car. The officer's boots hit the pavement with heavy, deliberate thuds. Hands where I can see them, he barked, his voice thick with hostility. Ronald complied instantly, placing his hands on the steering wheel, but the officer's tone didn't change. As Daniels looked into the car, his eyes narrowed and his posture grew more aggressive. What are you doing around here at this time of night? He spat, as though Ronald's very presence on the road was a crime in itself. Ronald, trying to stay calm, responded evenly. I'm on my way home, sir. But it wasn't enough. Daniels leaned closer, almost daring Ronald to challenge him. What are you hiding? The officer sneered. Why did Daniels immediately assume Ronald was hiding something? Was it because of the color of his skin? By now, Ronald's heart was pounding, not out of fear, but out of anger. He knew that no matter how respectful he was, this situation had already escalated into something far more sinister than a routine traffic stop. The tension thickened. Daniels had already decided that Ronald was guilty of something, and he was determined to prove it. After asking for Ronald's license and registration, Daniels began circling the vehicle, shining his flashlight into every corner, inspecting the car as though he expected to find something illegal. What would you do if the person meant to protect you treated you like a criminal? At this point, Ronald knew this wasn't just about following procedure. Daniels didn't see him as a Navy captain, a man who had risked his life for his country. To him, Ronald was just another black man in a nice car, someone who didn't belong in this part of town. With a sarcastic chuckle, Daniels returned to the driver's side. Navy, huh? He said, eyeing Ronald's military ID with disdain. So what's in the trunk, Captain? The way he said the word Captain dripped with condescension. Ronald's jaw tightened, but he remained calm. Nothing, sir, he replied, his voice steady but firm. Step out of the vehicle, Daniels ordered. His hand rested on the butt of his gun, ready to escalate things at any moment. What would you do? Comply or risk more danger? Ronald stepped out of the car, standing tall. At 6'2", he was an imposing figure, but he made no sudden movements. He knew that even the slightest misstep could lead to disaster. Daniels wasn't looking for an excuse to de-escalate the situation. He was looking for a reason to humiliate Ronald further. Daniels patted Ronald down, treating him like a criminal. He dug into his pockets, forcefully yanking out items and tossing them onto the hood of the car, keys, wallet, phone. Each action was designed to degrade Ronald, to strip away his dignity piece by piece. Have you ever felt powerless in the face of blatant injustice? But Ronald wasn't powerless. He wasn't just another man on the street. He was a Navy captain who had dedicated his life to defending his country. Yet here he was, humiliated, treated as though his achievements meant nothing. Why? Because of his skin color? As Ronald stood there, enduring the humiliation, a crowd began to gather. People watched from the sidewalks, some with their phones out, recording the encounter. The tension in the air was palpable. What was going to happen next? Could this situation explode at any moment? You think you're something special, don't you? Daniels taunted, leaning in close. You think your uniform makes you better than me? At that moment, Ronald could see it clearly. This wasn't just a traffic stop gone wrong. This was personal. Daniels resented him, not just because of his race, but because of what Ronald represented. Discipline, honor, respect. 
Ronald had earned his rank, while Daniels was using his badge to wield power over the vulnerable. How much longer can Ronald keep his composure? The officer, growing increasingly agitated, turned and started rummaging through Ronald's car without permission. His actions were unlawful, but Ronald didn't dare protest. He couldn't afford to. A wrong word, a wrong look. It could all end in tragedy. How many others had faced the same situation and weren't as lucky to walk away? But then, something unexpected happened. Another police car pulled up and out stepped Sergeant James O'Connor, a senior officer. His presence immediately shifted the atmosphere. O'Connor was known for his professionalism and fairness, and as he approached, Daniel's arrogant demeanor faltered for a moment. Was this the turning point? Could things finally be brought under control? O'Connor greeted Ronald respectfully, acknowledging his rank as a Navy captain. Captain Lewis, are you all right? He asked, glancing at Daniels with a look of disapproval. Before Ronald could answer, Daniels interrupted. This guy was acting suspicious, Sergeant. I was just doing my job. But his tone betrayed him. He was nervous now. He knew he had gone too far. Have you ever witnessed someone desperately trying to justify their wrongdoing? O'Connor wasn't buying it. I'll take it from here, he said, his tone firm. Daniels opened his mouth to argue, but quickly shut it. There was no point. O'Connor had already made up his mind. Sergeant O'Connor then spoke directly to Ronald. I'm sorry for the way this was handled, Captain. You're free to go. The apology hung in the air, but it wasn't enough. The damage had already been done. Ronald had been humiliated, treated like a criminal for nothing more than driving while black. But what happened next shocked everyone. As Ronald began to gather his things, Daniels, in a last-ditch effort to save face, muttered under his breath, should have known he'd pull rank. The crowd, already unsettled, erupted into murmurs of disbelief. Did he really just say that? O'Connor's eyes blazed. Officer Daniels, you're done. Turn in your badge. The words hit Daniels like a punch to the gut. His face drained of color. He hadn't expected real consequences. Daniels tried to protest. I was just doing my job. I didn't do anything wrong. He looked around wildly, pleading for someone, anyone, to back him up. But no one did. The crowd had seen enough. The bystanders, many of whom had recorded the entire incident, weren't going to let him walk away without consequences. Would you have forgiven Daniels, or do you believe he deserved the punishment? As Daniels stood there, his career crumbling before his eyes, he turned to Ronald, the man he had just spent the last hour humiliating. His voice cracked. I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean for it to go this far. Please, forgive me. But forgiveness wasn't something Ronald could give so easily. Not today, not after everything he had been through. He looked Daniels in the eyes and said firmly, it's not me you need to apologize to. It's every person you've ever pulled over and treated like this. You did mean for it to go this far, Daniels. You just didn't expect to get caught. The words hung heavy in the air. Daniels slumped his shoulders, defeated. His badge, the very symbol of the power he had abused, was stripped from him. The crowd remained silent watching as the officer who had once stood tall now walked away in shame. But this wasn't just a victory for Ronald. It was a moment of reckoning. How would this event change how people view racial profiling and police brutality? Ronald got back into his car, his heart still pounding, but now for a different reason. He had stood his ground, not just for himself, but for every person who had been wrongfully treated because of their skin color. And as he drove away, he knew this story wouldn't end with him. It would live on in the videos, the news reports, and the conversations that would follow. It was a reminder that no matter how hard things got, there were always those willing to stand up against injustice, willing to hold people accountable, even those in positions of power. But the question remained, how many more Ronalds would it take for real change to happen? The aftermath of the incident sparked a nationwide conversation. The video recordings from the bystanders quickly went viral, showing the world the ugly face of racial profiling and police abuse. People from all walks of life watched in disbelief as the story spread like wildfire across social media, news stations, and talk shows. Commentators, activists, and everyday citizens demanded answers. Would this lead to real reform, or would it be another story lost in the news cycle? Ronald, though shaken by the encounter, knew he couldn't stay silent. 
with the support of his family, he decided to speak out. He gave interviews, shared his experience, and called for more accountability within law enforcement. The story wasn't just about him anymore. It was about changing a system that allowed officers like Daniels to abuse their power. Meanwhile, Daniels wasn't just facing public humiliation. He was facing legal consequences. An internal investigation revealed that this wasn't his first offense. There had been numerous complaints against him for excessive force, racial profiling, and misconduct. This time, there was enough evidence to hold him accountable. Would justice be served, or would Daniels walk away with just a slap on the wrist? As pressure mounted from the public, the police department had no choice but to act. Daniels was not only fired, but charged with misconduct and abuse of power. The department, in an effort to save face, announced new reforms aimed at addressing racial bias and strengthening police accountability. But was this enough? Was it a genuine effort or just damage control? Ronald, however, wasn't content with just seeing Daniels face consequences. He knew that for real change to happen, it had to go beyond one officer being punished. He continued to push for broader reforms, speaking out at city council meetings, working with community leaders, and advocating for policies that would protect people like him from ever having to experience what he did. His message was simple. This isn't just about me. It's about all of us. If we don't stand together and demand better, nothing will change. And people listened. What began as a single harrowing encounter on a quiet evening became a movement. More and more people came forward with their stories, sharing similar experiences of being mistreated and dehumanized because of their race. The voices of the marginalized were finally being heard. But the journey wasn't over. There were still many battles to fight, many wrongs to right. Ronald knew this wasn't just a victory for him. It was a small step toward a larger goal. A goal where people of all races could drive down the street without fear, where wearing a uniform didn't make you a target, and where justice was truly blind. As Ronald stood before a packed auditorium one night, delivering a speech to a crowd of supporters, he ended with a powerful message. We will not stop until everyone is treated with dignity and respect. This isn't just a fight for me, it's a fight for all of us, and we're just getting started. And with those words, the room erupted into applause. Ronald had become more than just a Navy captain. He had become a symbol of resilience, justice, and hope. So what do you think? Will this be the moment that sparks real change, or will it be forgotten like so many others? One thing is for sure. You do not want to miss what happens next. Ronald's fight for justice didn't just stop at speeches and interviews. He began working closely with local and national advocacy groups focused on ending racial profiling and police brutality. His story became the catalyst for larger conversations, not only about police reform, but about how deeply systemic racism had been embedded in society. He wasn't just a victim. He was a warrior on the front lines of change. Meanwhile, the case against Officer Daniels moved forward in court. The evidence against him was overwhelming and his previous incidents of misconduct painted a picture of an officer who had long abused his position. Public outrage grew as more people learned about the countless complaints Daniels had racked up without facing serious consequences. How many more Daniels were out there, slipping through the cracks of a broken system? The trial drew national attention, and every day outside the courthouse, protesters gathered, holding signs that read, Justice for All, End Racial Profiling, and we stand with Captain Lewis. Ronald, ever the composed leader, made sure the protests remained peaceful, knowing that their message was more powerful when delivered with dignity. Daniels, however, showed no remorse. Throughout the trial, he maintained his innocence, claiming he was just doing his job. His defense team tried to paint Ronald as someone who had overreacted, arguing that Daniels had reason to be suspicious. But the courtroom was filled with recordings testimonies, and evidence that said otherwise. Ronald's calm demeanor during the encounter, combined with the public's outrage, made it clear that this was not just another case of misunderstanding. It was a clear abuse of power. In the final days of the trial, the defense took a desperate turn, with Daniels pleading for leniency. He stood before the judge, visibly shaken, and begged for forgiveness. I never meant to hurt anyone, he said, his voice breaking. 
I thought I was protecting the community. Please don't take my life away for one mistake. But was it truly one mistake or a pattern of behavior finally catching up to him? As Daniel stood there looking broken, the courtroom was silent. All eyes turned to Ronald, who had been watching intently, his expression unreadable. The judge, after a long pause, asked if Ronald had anything to say before the sentencing. The room held its breath as Ronald rose from his seat and approached the front of the court. The weight of the moment was palpable, and everyone wanted to know. Would Ronald forgive the man who had humiliated him, or would he demand the harshest punishment? Standing tall, Ronald looked directly at Daniels. His voice was steady, though the emotion behind it was undeniable. I spent my life serving this country, believing in justice, fairness, and the rule of law. What you did to me wasn't just about one traffic stop. It was about years of injustice, years of people like you thinking they could abuse their power without consequence. Daniel's eyes lowered, shame washing over his face. But this isn't about revenge, Ronald continued. It's about making sure this never happens again to anyone. He turned to the judge, his voice resolute. I don't want to see this man's life destroyed, but I do want justice. Justice means accountability. He needs to face the consequences of his actions so that the next person in his position knows that there are limits to power. The courtroom buzzed with murmurs as Ronald finished. His statement was both powerful and compassionate, striking the perfect balance between seeking justice and offering redemption. The judge, clearly moved, nodded solemnly. He handed down a sentence that included jail time for Daniels, community service, and a requirement for him to participate in racial sensitivity training. It wasn't the maximum punishment, but it sent a strong message that actions had consequences. As Daniels was led away, the weight of the moment hung heavy in the air. Ronald had not only won justice for himself, but had set a precedent for others who might find themselves in similar situations. In the weeks that followed, changes began to take shape within the police department and the broader community. New policies were introduced to address racial bias in policing. Officers underwent mandatory training and an independent oversight committee was established to review incidents involving excessive force and racial profiling. Ronald became a key figure in advising on these changes, using his experience to push for meaningful reform. As Ronald reflected on his journey, he realized that the road to justice was long, but it was one worth traveling. He had turned his personal pain into power, not just for himself, but for countless others who had suffered in silence. His story had become a beacon of hope in a dark time, a reminder that while the fight against injustice was far from over, progress could be made. And as he stood on the steps of City Hall one afternoon, looking out at a sea of supporters, he knew that this was only the beginning. The work would continue, the fight would carry on, and the story of Captain Ronald Lewis would inspire generations to come. So what do you think? Can one man's courage really change a system? Or is this just the first battle in a war that's far from won? One thing is certain, Captain Lewis didn't just win for himself. He won for all of us.